Kip, how about that stay trashy tour? Low ticket alert. Moving hey some picky hey wickies. Gang, listen, here's the turkey. We've been all over the country. We're coming again. It's a good time. Stand up comedy. Play a little AYG with the crowd. Come and hang. Yeah, guys, this is just the first leg. In March, we're starting Baltimore, Maryland, Virginia Beach, Virginia, Ooh. Richmond, Virginia, Oklahoma City, Dallas, Texas, Houston, Texas, Ooh. Austin, Texas. Then in April, we're doing New Haven, Connecticut, Burlington, Vermont. Then in May, we're doing Tampa, Dania Beach, Florida, Raleigh, North Carolina. Then in June, we're doing Cleveland and Columbus. We're adding more cities as tickets are going quick. Some of them are about to sell out if they're not already sold out, so don't snooze on this. Welcome to another exciting edition of Are You Garbage? The show where you find out if your favorite comedians are classy individuals or absolute trash. Now, here are your hosts, Kevin Ryan and H. Foley. Hey, everybody out there, and welcome back to everybody's favorite new podcast. This is Are You Garbage? Oh, yeah. That little show we sit down with your favorite comedians, and we find out if they grew up to be classy. Yeah. After just a big old piece of trash. Trash, trash, trash. I'm your host, H. Foley, coming at you on a beautiful day. We're down here at Aunt Tootie's basement. She's out at the Acme stealing dinner. Okay. <laughs> so, talk about sous vide. You don't okay. want to know where she keeps the, the fillets. Okay. Hey, yeah. All right. <laughs> My co-host is coming at you from across the table. It's a goddamn family episode, ladies and gentlemen. Just the boys, just the girls, just the bozos, and just the homies. Mm -hmm. He is the CEO of Are You Garbage? He is an international businessman. He is not to be trifled with in the boardroom, the bedroom, or the bathroom. <laughs> K-Butts, huh? Yikes! <laughs> It's KJ. That ain't no cheerleader in there. <laughs> Kevin James Ryan. What up, gang? Thanks for tuning in. As always, please make sure you rate, review. Cheerleader is so perfect. <laughs> make sure you rate, review, subscribe on iTunes. Full video available on YouTube. As you know, those numbers are... True to rip. Cooking. Yeah. I mean, that thing is on. That thing is fucking smoking meth or we something. I love it. I don't know. What's got counter must be broke over there. There you go. Uh, guys, when you sign up for Patreon, uh, you get the, uh, a, a, sh a crap ton. Uh, I, I can't curse in the first minute. You get a crap ton of content. I'm talking like uh, maybe two, three bajillion hours. We got episodes of Hard Feelings. We got bonus episodes of AYG. We got the Disney vids coming. We got everything cooking over there. Check it out. Real jive turkey over there on that Patreon. Yeah. That's not a curse. Nope. <laughs> How about a nice quick shout out to our producer extraordinaire, the magic man, makes us all look good, works those ones, works those twos, crosses those T's, dots those I's, got a fresh pack of crayons back there. Mm -hmm. Give it up for T-Bone McScruffins. Toby McMullen, everybody. What up, dudes? What up, t Barn? Yo, cute insults are the best. Yeah. Like this mother sniffing bumble butt. Uh, <laughs> shout out to him, dude. Sound like a bunch of who's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. What was it? A, a Wiggy Muffins on a uh, Elf? Sniggle Puffs? Something like that. I don't know. Yeah. If you do it, you're going to clean it up. I tell you that much. You know what they're really talking about. <laughs> Loose broads. Ah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> The fresh pack of crayons made me the made, fresh pack. <laughs> fresh pack of crayons made me think. Uh, what was your uh, what was your crowning achievement as a child for school projects? What was the best thing you ever made? I made a diorama. Were they called? Take it easy. Uh, no, where were they? <laughs> were the shoebox in the other? On like the shoebox. Big Indian dinner, huh? <laughs> the shoebox. What? <laughs> Diarrhea. I don't know. <laughs> That's where you went with it. Okay. Uh, like the shoebox inside the, the shoebox lid inside the shoebox, and you create the little environment for the animals of or whatever. Of course. Um, I think one of those. <laughs> no, I should say. It's just horse stables. <laughs> uh, I remember the one time I had to make an Adam. <laughs> this is Nibbles. He's a mob horse. <laughs> <laughs> what? Big needle going into it. Uh, I had to make an Adam, and I really complicated. What's an Adam? An Adam, like an like Adam and Eve. No, an Adam. That oh, an Adam. Yeah, what am I saying? You said Adam. An Adam. Adam. Atom. Atom. You didn't say Atom. I, you listen. You just said Adam. You just said Adam. No, there's different. Adam. 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 There, I You're said, not saying Atom. Yeah, I understand. I'm putting. I'm saying it properly. Adam is a, Adam. Adam is you're, a person. You're saying the same word no, when I'm you not. say. Yeah, I'm telling you, you At, are. Stop. I it, might not say stop. words right, but I got a, headphones on and I hear exactly what you're saying. Ready? You have to meet my friend Adam, and then he's made of atoms. You, you didn't say that when you said it the first time. You're just yes, I did. No, you, you also said him the exact you same. Thing. No, Thank I you. didn't, dude. Yes, you did. At um, that's not what you're saying. That's not what you said the first time. Adam and Adam. 
That's not, oh sure. That's not what you did when you said it's Adam. You go, it's not Adam, it's Adam. I think you're lying. Uh, Toby, the, the guy in charge of the ones and twos just agreed with me. Toby? I do cross the T's and dot the I's. Hey, and you did not have a T in that you Adam. That was a D. You that don't know anything a... about electrons, though. <laughs> I'll tell you that. That was an uppercase D in that You Adam. made an Adam. Yeah. Uh, and we bought this thing for like a wreath or something. <laughs> Tennis balls and golf balls. That's what everybody was doing, but I... I cut why I wanted and my dad I had my dad weld it and he was so mad, dude. I waited till the night before we had to we had to go. I was like, Yeah, you gotta weld it. Get the acetylene out or whatever. Yeah, it's called. he had to go with the acetylene. We had to drive to the fucking office to get his uh soldering machine. Like soldering tank, come back to the house, do it. And I remember he was smoking a cigarette because he was fucking soldering it back together. <laughs> Keep that uh, it stunk, man. He was so mad. Uh, Dropped that shit on 8, eight o'clock on a Wednesday. <laughs> he was upset. Man, they hated that shit. Yeah. Getting yeah. drugged to Michael's at like 7.30 on a Wednesday. Sure. Um, Woo, no shot at getting a pack of candy then, I'll tell you that. We also had to make an egg launcher at one point. And it was like simple machines, you know what I mean? Like a pulley, a lever, and a fulcrum. Was that the other one? Yeah. Uh, and this one had to be done with simple machines to make who could launch the egg the furthest. Ninth grade, probably. Eighth grade. And Simple machine for a simple boy. Yeah. yeah. No, I compl- I had my stepdad. Honor student, huh? I, I, what were you doing? <laughs> Not doing. I, was, I wasn't doing potato guns in high school. <laughs> he was getting straight A's at throwing rocks from trains. Yeah. What are you talking <laughs> Crushing pennies on the train tracks. That's what you were doing. <laughs> Break a window at the old Johnson place. No, we did. Uh, my, my crowning achievement was uh, graduation day or the last day of school. In- <laughs> Must have been a good career. <laughs> Graduation day. No one's doing work on graduation day. <laughs> I'm still trying to play catch up. <laughs> Eighth grade, we threw eggs off the building. That's They're- your crowning achievement in Listen. Listen. <laughs> that's not starting off. That's not a project. We threw eggs. He's like, well, we didn't launch eggs. And there I am on the roof throwing <laughs> eggs. <laughs> no. We had to make a parachute for an egg and the egg couldn't crack. You had to have something that could get it down there safely. That's very close to my project. And, and we weren't shooting them. <laughs> Plus, I hard boiled. I, I, I love how I'm like, we launch an egg. You're like, no, we were making them land safely. Did you really? He slammed that thing on. You could have Shaq slammed that thing on the ground. It wasn't going to break. <laughs> Yours were scrambled. I'm going to get too high and dry, will you? <laughs> Make uh, it an omelet gun. Oh, God. Mine's a Western. <laughs> Hey, if you're not gonna eat your fries, I'll have one. You're not gonna eat your taters. Nah, I did a regular one, but that was that was my that was my best thing. I can't. Oh, graduation day? What were you in a slow class? That's <laughs> what you're doing as a senior in high school. Oh, no, I said eighth grade. Oh, eighth grade. La- the that. last okay. day of school at eighth grade in the in the summer started. You had this big thing, and the teachers went up there and they would throw them off, and every the whole school gathered around. I think the news was there. <laughs> <It> probably was <laughs> slow day. Huh? The slow kid drops egg. But I used, um, I want to say it was like the GI Joe. I had, a, I had like a pretty solid parachute, and it floated right down. Man, it was like D Day. Mm-hmm. It was fantastic. That was that was the best. <laughs> hit the hit, hit DLZ. And then the next year in high school in Woodshop, we broke out the architecture stuff, the the foam strips. And you, had, you made a house? You didn't have to make a house? No, like the foam board, you mean? Yeah. No, we didn't have to make a house. We Mine made, was rough. We made a cigar box that I kept my Chiba in. <laughs> had a little drawer for my papers and all. Uh, yeah, we made a cigar box. I think we had to make a car, like, uh, a, like out of a, Sh- sure. a single, you know. A little that soapbox was, race car. Yeah, it was probably eighth grade, ninth grade, probably. I was junior high. I was eighth grade, probably. The kids that were really good at that. Mm. Yikes. Yeah, we you know, had, those are the things you wanted to be bad at. Yeah. To a degree. Uh-huh. Small kid over there making a shank. <laughs> getting ready. <laughs> getting ready for the yard. <laughs> yeah, no. Nah. Uh but I hate it. Yeah, I never really did well in anything. The papers, whatever. That was just get by. If it had to be eight pages, you know, you you fidget to be eight pages. Come on, of course. The projects were all right. I did kind of enjoy that. I mean, Make it a little more interesting if you're fucking launching exit from the 50 yard line. That ain't bad. Yeah, uh, my stepdad did that. We spent way too much. Like he was just like, wait. I mean, he made it his prize. He's fully like, automatic. Oh, dude, that thing. People were like, what the fuck? Shoots a dozen eggs a minute. <laughs> yeah, it was fucking, we ended up losing too. It was a fucking tough break. 
Uh, I wanted to ask you this, too, because I do this a lot. Um, you know, I personify things. Is it trash to say goodbye to places when you leave them? Like goodbye house? Is that weird? Yeah. Like, like if you leave a place. Thank you. Goodbye house. I think so. Is that what you do? Yeah. I always say goodbye. You say goodbye to your apartment? If I'm leaving for a while, I do. Wow, yeah, no. Or if like uh, if like we stay in an Airbnb and I leave the Airbnb, in my head I'll be like, bye Airbnb, thank you for everything. Uh, Is that weird? That's very weird. Yeah, that's crazy. Toby's I mean, that's stuff you do with like... Toby your, just put sunglasses on. That's stuff you do with your nieces and nephews. Like say bye to the whatever. That's weird to me. Yeah, really? but I don't know. You're a weird guy. I don't know what to tell you. What about the car? Does your car have a full personality and all that stuff? No, we've talked about this. It doesn't? No. Huh. It's just a car. It just gets me from point A to point B. Okay. I, I don't have a name for it or anything. All right. Uh, Yeah, no. I don't say... Uh, no, I don't say bye to... Say bye to the apartment? No. Bye to the building? No. No? People, people are going to think there's something wrong with you. Walking down, you know, goodbye, elevator. See you later, mailbox. <laughs> Goodbye, pizza place. See you at lunch. <laughs> Not those things. Okay, well, I mean, where do you draw the line? I don't know. A place that you've stayed at. All right, yeah, that's weird to me. I don't know if it's trashy. That's full-blown. Toby? That's full-blown psychotic, if you ask me. Help me out here. I don't want to. If I feel like if I do, I'd be enabling crazy behavior. If I was sure. like, oh, yeah, everybody's saying bye. For an to example, when we left the Airbnb in Disney, you didn't say goodbye, bye house? No. Really? I said, hello, New York. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I said, bye, Orlando. I ain't never coming back. Yeah. Um. That's, yeah, no, that's weird. Yeah, I don't know what to tell you. That's, uh, All right. should probably talk to a professional or something to clear that up. Real estate agent? <laughs> well, what do you think is going to happen if you don't say bye? That's do you nice. think it's rude? No. Like, they're going to be like, that Airbnb is going to be mad at you <laughs> and chase you down the block. You didn't say bye to me. It's not a fear After you thing. ruined my toilet. <laughs> <laughs> you do that to my toilet, you don't even say bye to me? Kind of kind of stu not are you? Daryl it. Uh, no, I don't know what it is. I guess it's personification. Okay. I make everything alive. Oh, sure. Does that, that make sense? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Uh, no, I mean, no, it doesn't make sense. I guess in the, the logic kind of, I, I'll live in this childish world with you i that's crazy i don't know yeah all right okay all right uh <laughs> welcome back to am i a psychopath ladies and gentlemen <laughs> saying goodbye to the airbnb i thought i thought or is it a fake house there's a fake house in orlando was yeah it wasn't a fake house it was a real house there was four walls his name was gary <laughs> <laughs> And he was a nice, sweet boy. He was a gentle lover and cooked me eggs in the morning that I quickly threw off the roof. He was going through a bad divorce, if you must know it. Yeah. He has two kids from a previous marriage. Give the guy a break. <laughs> He's got two sheds from a previous marriage. <laughs> He's got an in-law suite that won't stop hounding him. All right. Oh, man. But, gang, it's a gosh darn family episode. When sure is. Sign up for that Patreon over there. We'll answer your garbage question on the air. And I got to let you know. The homies over there on Patreon come with some real barn burners, mm -mm. real humdingers they do. They know what they're doing. Mm -mm. They're real trash, baby. They got they're top-notch trash, and you got to love them. Uh, all right, this one's from RWM. Ever take medication with a dipping sauce? <laughs> 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 no, but um, I don't think that would work per se. Some honey mustard Percocets? Yeah, unless it's got a bad taste or something. I usually raw dog them. We've talked about that, yeah. Usually raw dog them. But what I will do... Um, <laughs> Little maple syrup? No, I'll... Make them stickier? <laughs> <laughs> I'll name each pill and then build a little house that they live in. And I don't like eating my friends. Take them with Cheetos. Uh, I'm going to put peanut butter on it like I'm a dog. Get me to eat them. Piece of cheese. Hold your nose. I was always jealous of that, that the dog got a piece of cheese with his pills. Sure. My dad would just stand over top of me, swallow it, swallow it, because I was really bad with Sounds that. Sounds like a real calm guy. <laughs> and he asked first. God rest his soul. <laughs> Love you, Pop. Um, I was really scared to, uh, to take pills when I was a kid. I couldn't swallow them. Mm -hmm. I don't change in college. <laughs> <laughs> I started snorting them. <laughs> Doctor said I can snort these. 
No, but I remember that when they were free base and diamond tap in eighth grade. <laughs> I remember when they were trying to break me of the children's Tylenol, which I loved. Sure. Uh, it take take the regular the ones. red stuff. Yeah, they were the oh, red ones. Wait, no, the red. Oh, you were taking children's Tylenol liquid. You mean the or red pill? bottle? Yeah. No, no, we had little children's Tylenol that were chewable, oh, and they okay. weren't too bad. They weren't. It wasn't a Luden's, mm-hmm. but it was okay. Oh, you know? I remember the. I remember the phase into adult pills was like. It was scary. Like, what, am I going to get a job after this? What are we doing? This is real man shit we're talking about. What are you, you giving me, Excedrin? <laughs> what the fuck? Banger? I know, back problem. <laughs> what is this? I'm not arthritic. <laughs> the fuck? Give me the, right, give me the juice. <laughs> Take those water pills and stick them up your ass. I hated uh, that red uh, <clears throat> red Tylenol. If you had a fever, that's what like the, the sip. Like out of the, man, you might as well have been giving me plutonium. I fucking hated that. I get that guy. Chase it with a fucking shot of Sprite real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Take the edge off. Make two more. Make this into a snake bite. Yeah. Um, I didn't mind that stuff. I actually liked it. There was <laughs> there was a lot of cough medicine that I like. I love Dimetap. Is fantastic. The grape Dimetap. Dude. I remember even at an early age. Obviously, as a fat little wee wee lad, <laughs> still a chubster today. Um, uh, but I'm working on it. Um, it would curb my appetite. And after like four days, I was. I remember feeling I was. I wasn't. I just wasn't hungry. But I remember feeling trim. What are you, what are you a divorce woman? <laughs> <laughs> Taking Dexatrim? <laughs> fen, do you, fen pills? Do you remember Dexatrim? I mean, I and remember the the little name. pills inside. That blew my mind. Uh, the, the little, little pellets. tiny b- pellets yeah. inside. Ooh, um, and I found that it was just crank for divorcees. <laughs> yeah, it's just meth. It's just speed, dude. No, I'm not hungry. <laughs> just all fucking zipped out. <laughs> hey, you read the paper in three minutes. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> you try a fucking cup of decaf and some melatonin toots. You're fucking all over the road. Here. Holy shit. I remember that stuff would make an appearance here and there. Not with me, uh, but just like it would be around. There's someone who would be taking it or whatever. Um, I No, but the di- I remember after a couple of days being tight, all right? Tightening up, lose a couple of water weight, skip a, skip a Burger King meal sure. or whatever. And I'd be t- I remember being tight. And I remember being like, oh, dude, you could just... Take a shot of this every morning. You'd be you'd be trim in no time, beating off the ladies with a stick. <laughs> like an old diamond temp breath, Ryan over there. <laughs> um, I didn't mind that stuff, but the the regular pills, man, that was really yeah yeah. I remember one time when Advil came on the scene. That I was like an M M&M. and M. No, I remember. I'm I used trying, to suck on them. I'm trying to take an Advil, yeah, and I was like, I, and I I wouldn't. I'm like, I'll just suck on it, and my mom's like, you can't do that. I re- Remember yelling at me. I'm like, what? It'll get into my bot. Like, it'll go. I If I suck on a piece of candy, that goes into my stomach. Do you this know, how, you know how bad they taste once you get through that candy no, coating? No, I never made it. Ooh. I remember spitting it out on the floor. Because the way they got me to take the pills is uh, they would take the regular Tylenol and they would put it between two spoons and they would crush it. And they would add a little water to it and make me take it. And it tasted like... It's like Civil War shit. <laughs> Straight Breaking down butt. pills and making your own elixir. Dude, it was brutal. But the one, I remember my dad just coming home from work one day when I was sick. And he was just fucking fed up with it. It had been going on for like six months. I'd gotten sick like two or three times. And he was just so pissed. Sure. And he just sat there and he was like, take the fucking pill. Mm-hmm. Took it, and once I got the hang of it, <laughs> I started doing it recreation. I can do like five, six pills at once and just knock them back. Mm-hmm. But what I was going to say is what I do, not honey mustard, but I'll keep. No, aren't you a big boy? Yeah, right. <laughs> I can tie my own shoes, too. Ah, hey, you don't say. Not really, but. <laughs> I used to be able to tie my own shoes. Henry's what the doing. fuck was that? Henry's Jesus doing Christ. pills at an eighth grade level. <laughs> <laughs> my little, <laughs> my little Henry's already snorting pills. The neighbor Steve can't even take them yet. <laughs> Does your son have his own straw? You legitimately said I can do them five five at a time. Yeah. He's something's going something's on. Something's going on. A little construction next door. Somebody's digging a way out over there. <laughs> oh fuck! <laughs> gonna be a goddamn coal miner pop through the window in a minute. <laughs> What year is it? You guys got any cobalt in here? <laughs> <laughs> you went the wrong way, buddy. 
Kip, it's Mint Mobile, baby. Ooh, the mintiest of the mobiles. Ooh, one of our faves over there. Uh huh. Gang, if one of your big uh, New Year's resolutions was not to blow money and be a jerk off, okay. do yourself a favor and uh -huh. get over to Mint Mobile. You can order it from home, and you're saving tons of money. What is it? Fifteen bucks a month. Yep. Let's go. And you know who owns that? Who? That Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> Gotcha, Kids at this, gotcha. and he just had a fourth kid. Help the kid out, will you? Yeah, Jesus Christ! Could use a couple of bucks uh, by going on, on by going online only. Mint Mobile passes those savings on to you. Yeah. So you choose. No brick and mortar. All plans come with unlimited talk and text, plus high speed data delivered on on the nation's largest five G networks. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and switch easily in minutes with e sim. There you go. Switch to Mint Mobile and get premium wireless serving. Start at just fifteen bucks a month, like the big man said. Yes, to I get did. Your new wireless plan for just fifteen dollars a month, and get the plan shipped to your door for free. Go to mintmobile.com/garbage. That's mintmobile.com/garbage. Cut your wireless bill to fifteen bucks a month at mintmobile.com/garbage. Do it, folks. Hey, -ya. Kippy, it's Butcher Box. Butcher Box. Butcher Box. Ooh, Butcher Butcher Box. Butcher Box. Yeah, I got a fridge full of meat. Yep. Bang. Uh -huh. I tell you what. <laughs> They sent over the kit and caboodle. I think you forgot we were doing an ad read, and I like it. <laughs> they sent over the kit and caboodle, dude. I know. I got ribs coming out of the ears. I know. I got ground beef. I got turkey. I got free-range chicken. No antibiotics. Grass-fed, grass-finished, free-range. The whole nine yards, man. They do it real nice over there, and they take the guesswork out of it. They do. I like when they just send it. Uh -huh. I tell the bird, figure it out. <laughs> Whatever they send you, I don't care if it's turkey or pigeon. I know. Get something cooking. Shout out to Squab. I've had it. Really? Yeah. Uh, you I know mean, what they sent real quick? What's that? Side note, they sent a pork loin. Oh, yeah. Dude, that thing was banging. Yeah. Slice that up. Sizzle, I got a sizzle. rack of ribs. I don't know. It's like a brontosaurus or something. This thing's huge. I had, to, I had to get a meat freezer for this thing. It don't even fit in a regular fr freezer. Got him off the undertaker. <laughs> I'm giving out racks of ribs like Bumpy Johnson. <laughs> Dude, they hook it up. I know. All right, let's get back on track here. We're, we're professionals, gosh darn it. You enjoy a range of high-quality cuts at an amazing price, plus free shipping in continental U.S., no yeah. surprise fees. Butcher Box is offering our listeners one of their best deals yet. Who knows what, what it what? is? 100% <laughs> grass-fed <laughs> grass chuck roast and a whole organic chicken free when you <laughs> join. And an additional $20 off your box. Jesus. Sign up today at butcherbox.com. AYG. Use the code AYG to get... 100% grass-fed chuck roast and a whole chicken free in your first box plus $20 off. That's butcherbox.com slash AYG and use code AYG to get this special deal. Now back to the gosh darn show. Back to the show. Uh, <laughs> all right, this one's from Bruce. This is something we used to... Oh, no, I'm sorry. It's not from Bruce. It's from Cameron. Uh, is it garbage to put a piece of bread in a bag of cookies to keep them softer for longer? Did you know that rule? That trick? That's a real old, uh, that's a poor dirtbag trick. So you bake fresh cookies, and then you take a container, whatever you put them in, and you put a piece of bread in there, and that absorbs the air first, and that gets crazy fucking hard after like a day. Hmm. And the cookies stay soft, mushy, delicious. We used to do that with bacon. What? Yeah, put a piece of bread in there with the bacon to soak up the grease. Huh. You didn't bacon eat the bacon. Bacon where? In the pan? In a, no, 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 no. When you, if you had leftover bacon, mm -hmm. she would put it. I think so. I don't know. Yeah, it would be on top of bread. I guess maybe to soak it up. To soak it up. She, you know, I, yeah, I don't know. I never heard that. But, but then you got a lopsided loaf. You're gonna have an uneven sandwich proportion now. I don't know if they're even all the time. No, I don't think. I don't so. think they're counting to make sure they're even. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't remember any time I've ever ended up with one end. Yeah. yeah. Always. Yeah. Always. Always. I feel like you have an odd number. A lot. I don't think they cut sandwich. I don't think they cut bags or loaves of bread. I could be wrong, but to perfectly make a number of sandwiches. Give that a goog. Because I know they fuck you on the hot dog buns. Yeah, or they just, used to. That's just good marketing. They used to. Yeah, you got to buy two packs if you want to make. They don't do it anymore. It's eight and eight. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. What uh, do you got? 20 to 24 uniform slices. 20 All to bread? Yeah. Is he going to get drywall in there, too? No, I meant all loaves of bread. That It could it could differ from manufacturer sure. to manufacturer. It's got to. I it's wouldn't know to. anyway, because I always take an extra piece. 
make a to make a little yeah, make a little heifer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Why I'm making my Sammy. Um yeah, that's a good trick. That I remember that was somebody dropped that on us when we were like I must have been seven and I was like telling I was telling other moms, like, yo, throw a piece of bread in there. That'll really you know, don't keep them fresh for the week, you know what I mean? You gotta replace the <laughs> bread too. Cause that like it gets it's like it gets like a dry sponge real hard. And you throw that out though another slice him. Hey Toots, I don't mean to be telling tales out of school, <laughs> but if you slide a piece of rye in there, <laughs> I think it's got to be white. It's got to be something real, real porous. You know what I mean? I assume you didn't mess with pumpernickel as a kid, right? Mm-mm. No, we were a Strowman's family through and through. Rye at my dad's from the bakery. We get a fresh, sure. fresh, fresh loaf of rye, and then he was that Italian bread. Uh, that was divorced dad shit. It was a you white, mean, just in the thing. No, 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 no. Uncut. No, no, not not a like a not like a baguette. It was Italian. No, those they're not baguettes. They're they're they're. they're, they're <laughs> no, I'm not. You're not. We're not talking about the same thing. We're talking about sliced white bread, but it was like a, called Italian style sliced oh, white Mayor, bread. Oh, Mayor's Italian. Oh yeah, well, that was banging. Was it M A H E R or something? something like that? Yeah, that was our local one. That shit was awesome. Mayor's Italian bread. Yeah. It was just white bread. It was just white bread. Yeah. Yeah, it's exactly what it was. Mayor's Italian bread. Mayor's premium Italian bread delivers the same high quality fresh baked bread and pre-sliced store-bought convenience. <sighs> That's what we were banging with back in the day. And you know what else, too? They were a little bigger. A little bigger, a little fluffier, too. Yeah. Yeah. Make a, make a PB, <laughs> PB sandwich on that long style. Because <laughs> the Strowmans were square. Strowman bread stinks. Brutal. Also, too, if, she, she, if it was on sale, she put it in a freezer. Fucking break that out, thaw that out. Smelling like fucking crab legs or whatever else was in there. You know what deserves a Fuck medal, like, like a medal of honor? Is the Aldi split top wheat at 89 cents a loaf. That kept me alive for 10 years. We, we, we had Stroman split top wheat. The split top wheat, with the, some of it was with butter. Oh, yeah. They put butter in that crack. But that Aldi that bread, dude, you got butter in your crack. <laughs> Sometimes. Hit the Aldi, grab some split top wheat, some off brand PB and J. That'll keep you moving. Aldi's wasn't around. That's that's weird that you had Aldi's. That was in my po- that was in my poor days, early twenties. Yeah. Oh, okay. no, they were around. Yeah, they were. No, around I know they were around, but yeah, not. Yeah, they yeah. weren't around. That shit wasn't flying in Philly. Al- Al- Aldi's were there, I think. In Philly, in two thousands, so yeah. Oh, 2000s, okay. Yeah, yeah. I All mean, right. he wasn't like, you know, this wasn't like the 80s. That's right. I keep forgetting that. You know what I mean? Young whippersnapper you are. Um. All right. Let's see here. That shit definitely would have flew in the 80s. No. A German company. Oh, yeah. There's, yeah. There was, there was still some tensions lying. You know what I mean? There'd be guys out there with American flags waving them. You try to drop an Aldi on fucking on Washington Ave or something, you'd have problems. You want to sell me grapes, you're going to knock that wall down. <laughs> <laughs> Out of your goddamn mind. Yeah. You think I'm fucking donating to Changing, that. Change your name to Steve or something, all right, Franz? Kick rocks. Yeah, it ain't working. Um. All right, let's see here. This one's from Hoagie Fest. $10 homie. Never had one read before. Is it garbage to own a sports team street sign? Example, Steelers drives or parking for Eagles fans only. All others will be towed. <laughs> that is a real dirtbag thing, but it's a fun, kitschy sure. thing in a bar. You know what I mean? If you have any sort of real street sign, that even if it says something, if it's like real size and quality and color, that's cool. I told I'll you. I'll give you that. We had a bunch of that shit at the fraternity house. Stop signs that were stolen. One of the one of the kids was Couple an real tough guys, huh? One of the kids was an engineer. Stole a traffic light. We put that in the in the in in the acid room. That was a good Friday night. Yeah, I'll get you. Sit there and watch that and goof off. Um, yeah, but anything like that, that shit's kind of that shit is kind of fucking cheese cheese tastic, you know. I always thought parking it was, for Tom only or whatever. Sure, uh, we've talked about this, I think, but uh, the license plates on the wall. I thought I had one. Cousin. I still think that's pretty cool. Dude. It's not, but in my head, you have it's a like a bunch of different license. I remember like looking at like a Florida license plate, a mm-hmm. Jersey one. Like, whoa, yeah, sweet. I know. You yeah. steal all these cars. Oh, yeah, I remember. No, that, that makes. I, uh, where, I guess you could buy. I guess it's probably easy to buy now. But back in the day, to get your hands on different license plates, from you gotta different steal states, them. No, I'm sure you could get them somehow. No, so you're stealing license plates. Yeah. No, they were buying those somewhere. You think? 
Yeah, you're not just. I mean, I think stealing a license plate—that's like an actual. That's not just like stealing a street sign. Really? Stealing someone's auto tags? Yeah, that's that's like that's probably state property. Is that a felony? I don't think it's a felony. Oh, my God, it depends on what you use it for. It's a class A misdemeanor. Yeah, mm, class, class A. a. <laughs> <laughs> you don't say. Huh? Yeah, I mean, I think you. I mean. To do misdemeanor, one, but to, get that expunged. Yeah, but to do one, sure. But I mean, if you're <laughs> stealing, files are sealed. If you're stealing forty to decorate your bar or whatever, that's like they'll, they'll jam you up. If you're stealing a bunch of, you're just stealing license. Somebody plates comes all day. in, it's their license plate. Hey, hey what the fuck? <laughs> GXQ <laughs> going into long term parking with a screwdriver, just decorating boys. <laughs> what are you doing in the basement, huh? Treat them like it's a home goods. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Um, that's all I would say. Um, all right, this one's from the Kurt May. Shout out to the boys. $10 shareholder here looking to climb my way up that corporate ladder. There you go. <laughs> A real go-getter. Shout out. Uh, is it garbage to take your family or significant other to a used car lot sales promotion festival for Saturday afternoon entertainment with no plan on buying a car? We've well documented. Yeah, nothing wrong with it. I don't. That's th- America, right I've there. I've never done it, but back in the day, I, well, there was one on the bullet. There was a couple ones that would run them. We've talked. They would run it on local TV Shh, on like dude, channel. It was like nine. an event, man. And they'd have like a gorilla out there. Dude, and they'd have like a fucking some guy would pull up dressed it's like a as dirtbag circus. Sam. Yeah. yeah. Hey, pal, slip and slide's a slip and slide. I don't care where it's at. <laughs> free hot dogs and free diesel. Let's do it. And I tell you what, you got an Uncle Sam on a pair of stilts. <laughs> Look out. Mm-hmm. You didn't know what it was. You remember that? The first time you saw that? I remember the first time I saw somebody. Why else. was he always so tall? I don't know. It was, it was just always a character that they put on stilts. Just to be reason. over the crowd, I guess. <laughs> so he can drop that savings on to you. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, the, you know, the man's He's got to be it. above you to drop all those bucks. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, Uncle Sam on stilts. Look out. Uh, I want you in a Nissan Altima. <laughs> yeah, all that shit. <laughs> For no money down. Which I, res- I respect the local auto. Uh, we we talked about that, too, the difference between a dealer and a lot. We were a lot family. My dad's, we used cars all the time from a guy who we knew. My dad's favorite show was a local car infomercial. Mm-hmm. He knew the people. Now, this one's pretty hot. Where do you see her? <laughs> Wait, she, she, I'm she telling her you. Summer months, huh? <laughs> she don't have all. She's not all bundled up, eh? <laughs> Love the July Fourth sale, did he, big fella? Yeah, he did. <laughs> He used to watch them all the time. Uh-huh. This guy's pretty good. I'm like, it's a fucking commercial. What are you doing? Yeah. Nah, no, I respect it though. It's sure. Good. I mean. I would love to see them now. They probably don't do them as much now because there's just better time to better ways to spend that. I don't know. I catch them. I, I catch them when I'm home with my mom's. They're still poorly produced. Yeah, it's like, dude, an iPhone would look better than this. A lot. What of are my, we doing? Probably paying thousands of dollars too. Oh yeah, prob- some bozo production company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I guess people see me like I'm gonna get down there to the fucking Kia dealership, do the thing, get in the money booth, the whole nine yards. Mm-hmm. Which I respect, by me the way. Me too. That's a good. That's a nice Saturday afternoon as a family. Get you get the kids' hopes up that you're buying a new car. I always thought we were getting a new car. Like we're getting a new car. It's gonna be awesome. Nope. We never take your hot dog bun and shut up. I never remember per- like my mom. Would just show up with a car. We were never involved in it. Oh, we were heavily involved. No, never. It was a big deal. I remember we got our first Pontiac. We traded in my grandmother's uh, Ford Matador is what we were whipping around. And and I remember I cried. There you go. That's back to the. I remember I cried when we pulled away. That's different. You're a child. Because it was going to be there. It was going to be. No, who's going to ride in it? It was going to be there. It was going to be all alone. Mm hmm. Of course, we were whipping around that news. <laughs> the new Pontiac 600. Yeah. Couldn't tell me nothing. Bucket seats and a uh-huh. little fucking Steve Perry on the on the box. Uh-huh. Ooh, let's go. We always got cars. My stepdad always had the same cars for our whole life. He just kind of kept them until they disintegrated, and then uh, we get something else. But, like, for the majority of my life, he had the same two cars, Ford Ranger and a big Suburban. Um my mom, then he would always parlay. A friend is getting rid of this. It's a good deal. It's low miles. It was garage kept, and he would buy that and then give it to. Like my mom was just 
driving wild cars. That's smart, though. Smart. Sebring convertible, and she went to a, a GM. I don't know. It was a Bravado. Why spend the money was his thing. Yeah, they never bought any. She just recently got a new car, maybe three years ago for the first time. She got My parents just always leased. Always. New Maxima, New Maxima, New Maxima, New Maxima. Yeah. And my dad my up. dad kept his Nissan truck all through high school. I think I was rarely ever even in new cars growing up. Like even like this is the I mean, I this is the first new car I've owned was the Kia when I got that two years ago. My uncle Mike used to get a company car every few years. But my dad would get the new Jeeps. You know? Every time my uncle Mike got a That's new That's a write off. Every time he got a new company car, the whole family would be over there. It'd be like a Wednesday night after mm-hmm. after dinner. We're going to see Uncle Mike's car. We'd be we'd act like we were on the lot for that, sure. walking around looking Kicking under the, the tires. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's where the that's where the fluid goes. Some like, some Oldsmobile with wire wheels. <laughs> that just reminds me. AC that went down to about twelve <laughs> degrees. <laughs> Hooking in there. <laughs> My uh, couple of eaters. Family friend of ours. This just shook a memory. Family friend of ours. Uh, had a got a brand new white Cadillac, brand span like I remember. I remember because I remember doing the remember they re, they would start releasing them before the year. Like if it was ninety two, you could get a ninety three type thing. Ooh. And he had an early one. And we dude, we went over. There was like twelve kids, and he took us all for rides. It had a digital speedometer. I remember thinking I was in the Matrix, dude. I'm like, what the fuck? And he started whipping. We were trying to get to a hundred in it. What? That's, yeah, that's how much, dude. There was like fourteen kids in it. We're like, go, go, go. We're flying down this road at night, and we're like, get to a. I remember being in that the, ain't no highway either. <laughs> no. That's local. Oh, local. Doing a hundred. I remember a seatbelts. Seatbelts. <laughs> No, there's about 18 of us jumping around in the back. I was closing his eyes. I had my hands over his eyes at one point. <laughs> Shout out to Jared. That's all I'll leave it at. Shout out to Big Jared. That's yeah. a good piece of business. Brand new Cadillac in Bucks County. He's saying shit like, yo, they threw in his snakeskin boots for free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was all right, man. I had him out to add the pussy repellent. <laughs> Jumping on I, the car like zombies. That might have been the. F- that might have been. The I can f- see that car if it's what I think. The it is. white big body band, big body fucking. This thing was a boat. He would come. Did it have the? Did it have the horns on the front? <laughs> <laughs> Who had that? <laughs> Texas dudes. Yeah, no, yeah. Dukes of Hazard. Boss Hog had that. I think he did have the chain link uh, license plate perimeter. <laughs> no, <I'm kidding. laughs> those are all right. That's pretty good, dude. Yeah. Flexing one of those. Chain link. Yeah. You don't even need to have a license plate in the front of the car yeah. in, uh, in PA. They would just no, put them on there. That's only a New York thing to me. <laughs> uh, license plates on both sides. Oh, that's all right. Oh, man. Um, where, how do we even get there? Oh, the after the... Uh, Go to the used car dealership yes, on yes, a yes, Saturday. Yes. Um, all right, let's see here. Um, this is from Eric. Uh, saw you guys in Providence with the fam. Shout out to shout out to you. Um, what's the most garbage money sharing app? Venmo, Cash App, Zelle. I vote Facebook, aka MetaPay. They have that. I guess that's new to me. I would say Zelle is the shittiest. No, Zelle's used for business. Zelle's like real. Really? I had to download it because someone's like, we had to pay, or somebody's like, I can pay you in Zelle, and I was like, I'm not fucking down. I'm a Venmo man. Cash app if I gotta, but I'm Venmo. Cash, app, Ven- is, Cash app is the trashiest one. Cash, Cash app, because I think go. when you got it, you didn't have to have a bank account. Yeah, no drug dealers take Zell. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Zell thought- goes, Zell goes on the books. Really? Venmo, I think, is still a bit of a gray area. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> Cash App's fucking the wild, wild west. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> They'll mail you cash if you want to. Take it. When trains. you go to cash out. <laughs> Uh, Facebook, Facebook pay on paper does seem trashy, but it's might be, it's one of the best ones you use it. I have in the past instant money transfer, no fee. I like no fees. I'm a no fee kind of guy for an, but I do love it. And I'll pay for the, I like, I need an instant transfer, but what are you buying something on marketplace? You can do it from Marketplace, or you can use it like Venmo. Just send money to money. I don't trust fucking Facebook. I mean, they're no. getting hacked left and right. The government's got their hand in there. Yeah. The Russians. Yeah. Next thing you know, I'm, I'm buying fucking, I'm buying missiles in, in the Ukraine. Hey, this is when I was freelancing, buddy. Money's money. Get sure. it to me now. I, hey. <laughs> I don't hate. 
You got to do what you got to do to make ends meet. The way I judge that is what is what drug dealers and uh, what drug dealers take. Cash app. Cash app. Yeah. That's still lawless out there. Huh. Okay. Because you don't have to. Y- Good to know. Bank accounts. Like, I don't have a bank account or a card hooked up, and I got money in there somehow. Really? I don't know what. I don't know how or what. Maybe they give you a little money to start out. <laughs> hey, here's 20. <laughs> don't tell nobody. <laughs> You're a good kid, huh? Get over it. Let me say it. Hey. That would be real trashy. Uh, oh, you sign up and you get 20 bucks. <laughs> hey, I don't hate it. Free 20 is free 20. You know what I mean, daddy Hey, I already have it. Um, Damn, that's a pretty good idea. I think it, yeah, but I, I do. Venmo, I think, is the middle of the run. Is the, that's the good one, I think. That's the. They seem to be on the up and up. Trust Venmo. PayPal is like seems more, a little dial up. PayPal, it's a little old. Yeah, but it's good for business. They're like they focus on the business aspect, like the purchasing. Like some of our merch goes through PayPal and stuff, oh, like provided go. through PayPal. It's like PayPal is more business, I think. Or like I'm going to buy a car, I'm going to PayPal. You're not going to Venmo someone fourteen grand. You no. can PayPal someone for if you're buying like a car or whatever. No, that's the more secure way to do it. You I'm can't gonna, be texting fourteen grand to somebody. I'm gonna, you gotta log in. All right. I'm gonna Venmo them fourteen dollars and say, "Oh, my I secretary must that. have messed up." Then yeah. I'm gonna dip. That's like the big, which I respect. I don't know if we've ever. Me and you are a fan of the guy. The guy, I think, me and you, the guy who lied and almost bought the Islanders. Hundred percent. Yeah. Supposed to show up with a check for like fifteen million and showed up with a check for fifteen hundred and blamed the secretary. Yeah. To mail the bought, che- mail the check. He was like, oh, she missed five zeros. <laughs> bought him a couple days. <laughs> Guy almost, almost got away with it. it. Almost, almost got it. away with it. I respect I respect And would have been fine. If they just would have gave it to him. Mm-hmm. He, he would have w- figured it out. No. Guy like that. Because he had money because he would have been able to to do something with the capital of the team. He would have been able to have the money he lied about once they gave him the team. Sure. Which I guess he doesn't have that. All right. I mean, yeah, me too. I start selling tickets for a team I don't own. I'd have a couple of bucks too. Man, that's a good 30 for 30. Yeah, it was pretty good. <laughs> um, all right, let's see. This one's from JR. $10 Pennsylvania investor. Shout out to the good old Keystone State. The Commonwealth. Uh, is it garbage to wash your hair in the kitchen sink with dish soap? Some mornings, Oof. the cabbage up top needs an extra rinse. Yikes. Yikes. Dish I, soap. Yeah. The birds do that. My mom still washes her hair predominantly in the kitchen sink. Hmm. Yeah, she washes her hair, dyes her hair and shit in there. That's different. That's you're doing a you're doing a treatment or something. That I get I that. used I to love that when I would get that for whatever. Because the reason. bathroom sink's not deep enough. You can't no. get your noggin in there. Especially no. me. I'm jammed no. up. I got water squirting all over the goddamn yeah. place. Unless you got okay. that little head disease. Got a goddamn slip and slide in there. Yeah, no. You do it in the, um, but I used to feel like I was at a salon when my mom would do that, uh, wash my hair in that put thing. A towel around the you. warm with the pull out the thing and the warm water running mm-hmm. over you. Um There ain't nothing better than getting your hair washed at the at at the at the barber shop. At I a don't salon. Do it at the barber the salon. I mean I haven't done it in I think supercuts used to do it. Sure. I would always opt not to do it though. Some broad with nails running her fingers through your hair. I would dude, I used to go to this place on the upper east side when I worked up there at that law firm and I'd go get my hair cut. It was expensive. I I mean, it was expensive for me at the time, but now just realizing that's what Manhattan haircuts are. Sure. It's like forty five bucks or whatever. Jesus. Yeah. Manhattan dude, Manhattan haircuts are expensive. <sighs> Never. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're dude, even in my neighborhood, I think they're thirty five. 20 at my spots. Yeah, out in the boroughs. I'm talking, I'm talking, made, I'm talking Manhattan. Money the no, Empire's state of mind. Money never sleeps. Money huh? never sleeps. <laughs> I, go to a, I go to a fancy salon for ladies. Yeah. <laughs> Do a little gossiping. Um, these two. They were the best as a little kid. When you'd go, when for some reason you'd go to the, I'd get taken to where my mom got her hair done. Mm-hmm. I'd walk in there like fucking Leonardo DiCaprio. Oh my God, look at that kitty. Couple of fucking Werther's Originals hit me in the face. Couple of lines. little off the top, honey. Yeah. Now what's going on with you, broads? <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for a prom date. If anybody's interested, <laughs> Marcy, that slug husband of yours ever get a job? What's the deal? <laughs> I know in eighth grade that'll spin you around. Jesus Christ, That's a lot. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, I know. But I used to go to this place. It was these two Russian chicks. And it wasn't really a... Now that I'm looking back on it, I don't know if it was a full-blown salon. 
But they go in there and they give you whiskey right away. You want some whiskey? And at first I was a little hesitant, thinking they're going to dose me and steal my wallet, use my credit cards to buy art or something. <laughs> I'm not falling for that shit again. You wake up in a you wake up in a cargo container. <laughs> yeah, it's a, the cut still a little crooked. <laughs> God damn it! I shouldn't have tipped her. <laughs> no one's gonna buy me now. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking damaged goods. I forgot a bad fade here. <laughs> you could have cleaned me up a little bit. <laughs> but I'm going. I'm going out on the market here. Those <laughs> Albanians are real sticklers. Um, <laughs> But they, I mean, they, they weren't, they were two ugly broads too. They weren't even attractive, but they would wash my hair for about 45 minutes and I was loving every minute of it. It was all I feel like right. the dog. Yeah. <laughs> it was good, man. Ooh, Couple shots. Wee. They would even let me up to take sips of whiskey and I put me back down. <laughs> it was pretty good. You're getting high and tights at a Russian whorehouse. <laughs> It might have been. <laughs> I, I didn't want to bring that up, but it really might have been. One's cutting your hair, one's stepping on your balls. <laughs> Little freak. Got those binder clips on my nipples. <laughs> Instead of a rub and tug, you're going down to the cut and fuck. The cut and fuck. They blow Come on down to Olga's cut and fuck. Blow dry and yank the butt plugs out at the same time. Yee! <laughs> He'll be wet. Um, yeah, it was a uh, not no looking bad when I put secondary eyes on it. But like, cause you know, like when you go into a place and like the barber shop has like or like the salon or whatever has like the unit built into the wall with the mirror, like everything's in. This was just all like furniture. You know what I mean? Like nothing was connected to the wall. Get your hair like cut a, on a couch. Yeah, it was like a nightstand. I'm sitting in a folding chair. <laughs> My pants are off. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> the police busted. I'm just getting a cut, I swear. <laughs> yeah, sure you are, punk. <laughs> That's what they all say. <laughs> uh, I remember the, my first barbershop. And I was only, always the only guy. I was the only person in there every time I went in. And I had to Venmo them. That's how I paid them. Jesus. I mean, at least give me a fucking handy or something. I'm over here stiff as a bone. <clears throat> My first barbershop was Ron's in Wilkes-Barre. I think it was Ron's. And he was this old he was this older dude cutting serious men's haircuts. Uh-huh. And every once in a while, something would happen where I would get, usually she'd be in there with me, Patty. Yeah, of course. But she'd drop us off, I think, when we got a little bit older. I'm talking like 10, maybe 11. She'd run up to my aunts. We'd be in there. And you know what they had in there? Couple of Nudie play mags. boys. Pick up one of them. Throw a highlights magazine around that. Well, you threw that yeah, thing. Got your fucking <laughs> Looking at the highlights like this. <laughs> they knew something was up. Yeah, I just can't find that goddamn pencil sharpener. <laughs> <laughs> where the hell is that? Sure, where is that crayon at? And I'd get in the chair with a stiffy. Yeah, pushing through your Nittly Lions basketball shorts. <laughs> um, so how's school? Hey, shut up, man. Hey, shut up, all right? I'm losing my buzz over here. You got any more of them tall boys? That something to straighten me out. Is that fridge still cold? What are we doing here? Um, all right, let's hear this one from Kyle. Is it garbage to shed a tear at any point during the viewing of Joe Dirt? That's a good, wholesome movie right there. I respect every goddamn second of that film. That's a great film. Maybe when... Don't you think that Christopher Walken's dead and then he comes back? Yeah, but only for like a half a second. Huge per rack. <laughs> he gets a Woody on the stretcher. Oh, that's I just right. watched it not too long ago. That's right. Um, um, maybe at the end, you know, or I maybe you, when you finally see Brandy pulling up on those Daisy Dukes on that horse, dude, I'd the, shed a tear. Dude, I had such a fucking. She never crush went on, on to her. do much. Naomi, I think her name is. She never. I Google her every time I watch the movie. She was smoking. Yeah, she was crazy, crazy attractive. Smoking. Mm -hmm. Kid, one of Kid Rock's great film performances. It was fantastic. Played Ronnie. the heel. Yeah, yeah. He was all right. Hey, what's up, Ronnie? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing, Joe Dirt? <laughs> It's actually pronounced deer tay. Don't try to church it up. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, that was, I mean, it's a great movie, all in all. I mean, also, White Trash Handbook, that movie is. That's where, like, I mean, I hit you the other day with Van Halen, not Van Hagar. <laughs> of course. Yeah. That's a, of course. That's a straight Joe Deere. And thing. I hate Van Hagar. Mm -hmm. Ugh, Sammy Hagar can kick rocks. I was introduced to just at a, oh, like, that was too young when that was, like, all that was going down. I just remember seeing him with, like, the bleached hair and the Cabo Wabo. I just went, like, this guy seems like he would annoy the shit out of me at a party. <laughs> <laughs> like that's that's and I was like twelve. <laughs> it seemed like this guy would be a tough hang. The glasses on the poop. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go hey, check hey, out the I buffet. I think my dad's looking for me. Get out of here, Agar. Do you work here, dude? <laughs> yeah, who invite? This is invite only. Billionaire, that guy. Sure. Um. Well, he was big on MTV. I guess he was trying to do a resurgence or something. Back when I was probably ten or twelve or whatever, like he was. They big. had this big he hit with ribs. They stuff had this like big that. hit with him um, after David Lee Roth left. Uh, right now, I think the name of the song was, and it was in a Crystal Pepsi commercial. Yes, and it right blew, now blew. Blew the Right crazy. now, we might get hit for fucking plagiarism. You know, I what was I mean? fucking David Lee Roth all day. The best. Fucking showman right there. I was a winger man myself. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Kip Winger. Give me like rat. <laughs> <laughs> round and round. Saw him at the Pennsylvania State Fair, <laughs> which we should do this year, by the way. We okay. should go down to the racetrack at the Pennsylvania State Fair. Okay. Show you how Kippy used to come up and bang. There you go. I used, mean, to know, used to know a guy, the meat guy. Really? He would give us the connect. Yeah. Look at you. We get all these passes and free tickets because we knew the guy that supplied the meat. We always knew a guy. The, Ry the Ryans and the Sullivans, all no guys. You got to. Will yeah. I be able to cure my coaster fever there? Uh, I would not recommend no. getting on any of these nuts? rides, dude. This, I mean, it's in the... It's, dude, a it's mobile in. roller coaster? I got coaster fever, brother. I got to get my fix. I don't even know if... I don't even know if it's still there, to be honest with you. Uh, check Pennsylvania State Fair, Philadelphia Racetrack. Used to be in the parking lot of the racetrack over there on Street Road. Mm -mm. Watch the ponies trot. There you and go. go. out there and try to win a knife. That's what I would do. <laughs> Did you ever go to the racetrack with your family? Oh, yeah. No, no, the horse racetrack. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. My So my stepmom's uh, dad was big into racers. He was a big horse, big big gambler, big horse racer guy. Uh Bet, not like he wasn't in, like, you know, have a stable or anything. He wasn't a trainer. And, uh, the yeah. Pennsylvania State Fair stopped happening in 2004. Damn. Holy shit. Snake eyes. <laughs> <laughs> ah, just 20 years too late. Yeah. I was a good See if time. they got any goldfish still left. <laughs> yeah, what happened, to all those, what happened to all those giant stuffed animals? Really? That's what this says. Man, I wonder why. Someone got killed. Communism, probably, <laughs> if I had to guess. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking, you know, Jesus Christ. I got two words for you. Obama. Yeah, thanks a lot. <laughs> thanks a lot, Bin Laden. Obama has two words. <laughs> <laughs> Four years two, before his I presidency. Got two words for you. <laughs> Obama. Four years before his presidency. He's still blaming on him. <laughs> Yeah, that sucks. Damn, dude. That was, uh, dude. All that shit's going away. Some of the great that's where we fed the that's where we fed the pop billy big bubble gum and he just sat there and chewed it and stared at me and Pat for like an hour. One of the best laughs of my life, man. <laughs> just a pop belly big pig chewing bazooka. It was all right. That's a good piece of business. <laughs> I mean, dude, I tell you, me and Pat laughed. We ran out of quarters to get the feed out of the I machine. don't care how funny you are, animals chewing gum. <laughs> Nah. All right, let's see here. This one's from Sam Boney. First time, long time. Is it garbage have a clothesline in your backyard to dry laundry? Now, I feel that it's classy to have the option because some things are nice on the clothesline. Dude. Air dry. If you're doing it in a winter, though, that's a tough look. It can't, that can't be your only form of drying. I'll say that. When I was a kid, we had the clothesline in the backyard. Sure. And the sheets would go on there in the summertime, in the springtime. Sure. And I tell you, you going to bed at night, smelling that fresh cut grass was really some having an asthma attack. <laughs> was really something else. Sure. And then for a while, we had the we she that the at the house we're in now. She had the the one that went up and then came out. Like a look like an, an umbrella. Yeah yeah, 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 exactly. We, we, that's the one we had in, growing up. Yeah, that's all it right. Was in like man. ours was in like a concrete. 
pad with a hole, and you would put 100%. the post in the hole, like a yeah, like a like a patio umbrella type thing. Yeah. Then that that got overtaken by wasps too. In had a problem. <laughs> oh down yeah, there. those hollow aluminum. Oh yeah. <sighs> I remember those things would get hot as shit. I used to look summer. down there and just be like, God, no spiders yeah. and this and that. I wonder. I assume the pad still has to be in the backyard. Actually, now that I think about it. What the hole? Yeah, the hole with the concrete. Sure. It might just be grown over. Uh huh. Hundred percent. I haven't cut the grass in a long time down there. Yeah, we have a couple of those floating around in the backyard that has about twelve pounds of concrete in them. Yeah, a couple a couple bags of sackcrete. Like a German pillbox. There's <laughs> nothing's getting through that shit. Uh-huh. But uh huh. Yeah, in the city, that's trashy. Yeah, because it's like hanging out on something. I yeah, mean, it's but real I real do... Lower East Side. Yeah, like nineteen twenties. Yeah. Shit. Um. Yeah, it's tough. You, I, you, something's got to be dried. I respect that. I'm a dry. I dry some of my teas myself. I, you know, I got the little. Drying accord, the accord drying rack. You have that in the house. Yeah, you do. Uh huh. Wow. Yeah, that's They're like nine good. bucks on Amazon. We went with that exclusively for a while growing up. Really? Yeah, I don't know Sometimes why. Sometimes they just don't dry right. You got a bacon collar oh, cooking. It's bent. Uh, yeah, oh, stinks. It's like wearing. And also, cardboard. if you leave it there too long, then you have like a crease in the t-shirt. You go in looking like a like a folding chair. That ain't good. <laughs> This one's from Arturo, the Choro, $10 homie, never have one red. Let's go. Um, this one's a little con- a little longer. Is it garbage to offer to pay for something as a favor, yet show them the receipt so they know how much you paid? Context, my girl's dad paid for new brake pads, and after he paid for them, he gave her the receipt so she doesn't forget how much they cost him. That's a, that's a face throw. Where I come from. That's I had a, a full-blown face throw, I which I a, respect a face throw. I had a buddy in college, real sharp guy, came from a real sharp family. They did well, but he didn't baby the kids at all. They all had to work and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. He used to send him, the re- not the receipt, but he would send him a copy of the check. For tuition or something? Yeah. That I get, man. You're cutting those checks are, you know, it depends where you're going and when you were going. Ten, there were tens of thousands of dollars. Yeah. I respect that. It used to make me feel like a piece of shit. Hey. Because I was blowing it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bad student. Mm-hmm. This kid was an RA, fucking dean's list or honor Working. roll, whatever you had. His dad used to send it to him. Hey, that's probably why he was a good kid. You you could have used that. You'd snap into, snap into line a little bit more. Sure. Not doing all your drugs out there in Seattle or whatever you were doing, playing Sunny Day for the with the boys. I wouldn't. I, Maybe it, you would have been an RA. Maybe you would have been on Dane. It Lewis. wouldn't have mattered who my parents. My parents could have been fucking uh, General Patton. Yep. I, you're dumb, you're dumb. I, yeah, I still would have been <laughs> terrible at school. Yeah. I had undiagnosed AD, ADHD when I was, I didn't know what was going on. Mm-hmm. You couldn't keep me for a second. And they didn't get me glasses until I was in sixth grade. I couldn't see a goddamn thing. And those were shot glasses. <laughs> They're sunglasses. <laughs> a pair of Ray-Bans. I look good. See Getting them, my DS. See, see in the back, it look cool. Back there like Ray Charles. Anything the teacher asked you, just go, yeah. Mm-hmm. That was it. Um, yeah, I had no shot. Sure, I get that. Just dumb when it comes to that stuff. We were big on that. My, my family was big on that and always what, rounded What, just up. dumb? No. Oh, smart street smart group. Uh, no, I'm that. saying labeling one of the family members. He's just dumb, and let no. Them be. We would never say that. You would just say he just don't get it. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, but making that Steve's decision. boy, he just don't get it. Yeah, yeah. That's, Gary's son, he just don't get that it. That was kind of my family's approach to me until you still don't get it. Until late in high school, I think they tried. They made an effort. I think I was over at Sylvan Learning Center for like one time. Working? <laughs> Painting the walls or something? <laughs> get, get this kid doing manual. Yeah, I was over there for something. I was like, I'm not going back there. That guy yeah. fucking sucked. And then um, in college when I got diagnosed with, you know, ADD or whatever it was. Uh, that was just from Ritalin. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was just drug-seeking behavior. Well, yeah, I mean, they gave it to me, and I did it all one weekend at Penn State. And then they never put me back on it. But they made me see, like, I had to go to, like, a therapist for a little while for, like, you know, learn for learning disabilities or whatever. But by then it was, it was yeah, too late. It's out the door. Yeah. Uh, no, we would get the face throw of the amount of money spent on whatever, and that number was always rounded up. If something cost $412, 
It's five hundred. That was five hundred bucks coming right down your skull. I just spent five hundred dollars in a goddamn roller skate or whatever. Just something getting launched at you. Me and it, the worst was if it wasn't directly to you, it was to somebody else. Like it was my mom, and my dad going at. I just gave them the eight 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 hundred bucks for the fucking whatever or whatever. It was six ninety five, ma. Yeah, fuck, fuck you, say. Yeah, jam me up real sweet. <laughs> Cut down a gravy train. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Once he got that, I was playing both ends against the middle, of trying to get stuff as like the divorce. Oh, you got pinched. Oh yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, it worked until about sixth or seventh grade. Yeah, I remember you got the the BB gun, the mini the bike. BB gun, the mini bike, and then he yeah, maybe that's when times got a little tough too. Come to think of it, that's <laughs> when the phone call started. <laughs> That's when we got jammed up. He gives you his phone. <laughs> hey, I'm not here. That was a big thing. I ain't here. Who's calling? Who's calling you at midnight? I ain't, I don't know who it is, but I ain't here. <laughs> Tell him I'm out working. You got to stay up and man the phones like, oh, a, like a call center. Oh god, that goddamn! Anytime I hear answering a phone the phone ring, is Jerry. It is dude, Jerry. That's why I, I can't answer a phone. I can't hear a phone. It's like PTSD of people looking for money. Even even with me, I mean, with Easy Pass just called me, but yet, like, what, an hour That's ago? That's crazy. They called you for 25 bucks. Mm -hmm. It might be more than 25. <laughs> <laughs> well, why wouldn't it work? What? I don't know. That ain't my problem. Here's the story. This is more hard feelings, but we'll get into it. I have Easy Pass. I'm doing all right. <laughs> and... You have it put up there? No. Here you go. <laughs> I put it on the dashboard, and sometimes if I'm banging a hard left, she slides around on me, and I can't find her. But it's in the car. My defense is it's in the car. Also, all right, here's the thing. If they, this is dirtbag logic. I, I pay for the, I pay for the service. I buy it, whatever. They bill me. When I go through it, if it doesn't pick up, it should go into their system to be like, hey. Does this license plate have an active tag and is paid up? Mm -hmm. They don't. They just mail me a bill. So now it's on me to write a fucking check or go online and pay something. And Easy Pass mails it out, not the state of Easy Jersey. Pass gets huh. me. And then there's some local municipalities sniffing around for cash sure. too. Okay, Lower Makefield never going back there. Again. <laughs> yeah, no shit. I don't even know where you are. I remember we drove back from Virginia one time. Me and my buddy, we didn't have money for the for the tolls, and we did. We had to just fill out paperwork. Mm -hmm. I burn that car a couple yeah. years later. <laughs> Torch it under the GWB. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, that's all. That's all kooky patooky to me. Um, I don't probably get to the point where I I end up owing three hundred bucks and I get mad and just pay it. There you go. But I'm not getting. I mean, twenty five dollars. I'll go to the goddamn mattresses. I ain't got nothing better to do. Yeah, I got a. I, gotta... I go. It's twenty five bucks. Your easy pass. Do the math. Just start Google my license plate. It's in the system. I got a thing from uh, some collection agency in Chicago. Chicago. It's like Sterling and Sterling or something like that. Oh, uh, that's that's a law firm. Nah, I have it on my phone. I could look. It's it, it's a collection agency. I looked it up for two hundred bucks from Mount Sinai. I'm in there all the time. Say something to me. <laughs> Tap me on the show. Pull yeah. me aside. Yeah, something. fuck it. You're turning me in for 200 Yeah. How much money I fucking put in your pocket over the last couple of years with all the tests and the doctor's visits and this and that and the other thing? You're fucking ratting me out to somebody outside the family? Yeah. And I got them trying to call me for 200 bucks? Get the fuck. Collection, it should be. It's got to be in the thousands. Can't be hitting somebody up for forty five bucks, twenty five bucks, twenty five bucks. Easy pass. The bridge is sixteen alone to get in and out of New York. You're breaking my stones for twenty five bucks. You're in the hospital going. I don't tell anybody about the bad shit you tell me. Yeah, yeah. no shit. Keep my mouth shut. I know that IV's just ginger ale. You think I'm fucking stupid? Fucking oh. bastards. Uh. It's crazy. Well, we gotta wrap it up, gang. Gang, we love you to death. Love yous. Come see us on the road there. Sign up for the Patreon. Yeah, we're all over the road. The tickets are moving fast. Some cities, by the time this comes out, might be gone. Uh, so get them. Don't snooze on that because they're going quick. And we'll be adding a second leg and a third leg. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. If, you're, if your city's not on there, we're coming to see you, baby. Oh, yeah. Stay Trashy Tour 2023. Let's go. Peace. Peace.